In this video I'm going to share with you 14 things that I believe koi and fish pond owners waste money on unnecessarily. I've broken it down into three distinct categories. The first one is for items that have their prices I believe artificially inflated just because they're linked with koi keeping. The second is for items that I believe are false economy. So things where if you spend a little bit more money you'll probably save yourself money in the long run. And finally the third group of things that don't contribute anything positive or bring any benefits at all to us or our koi. And make sure you stick around to the end because I do have a 15th item as well that would f literally fit in every one of those three categories. My name's Darren and I'm at Koi and Fish Pond Help videos on the Dazzle Koi YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, do subscribe to the channel and also don't forget to hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates. So, the first category, category one, is overpriced items. First up, chemical dechlorinators. These products are extremely uh, overpriced. The majority of them are based on a chemical called sodium thiosulfate. This is a very readily available chemical. Uh, comes in crystal form. You can pick up a bag off eBay, a kilogram bag off eBay for a few pounds. It is safe. You would struggle to overdose with it. You can add it to your pond water directly. You can mix it with water and then add it to the pond. Effectively, the, the bottles of treatment that you buy are based around th sodium thiosulfate already diluted in water. Don't waste your money on branded chemical dechlorinators because essentially that's all they are. It'll remove chlorine it'll remove chloramine. By doing so it does free up a tiny amount of ammonia. It is a trace amount. It won't cause you any problems. Your, your um, filter system will mop that up comfortably. So yes, number one, chemical dechlorinators. The alternative for a fraction of the price, sodium thiosulfate crystals. Next up, number two, we've got blue bowls, inspection bowls, whatever you want to call them. They are essentially a blue plastic bowl. Because the colour is, is conducive to sort of highlighting a koi's colours, they have become associated with koi keeping for if you want to treat, if you want to inspect, if you want to photograph your koi. The blue bowls, if you buy from a koi dealer, you can pay easily upwards of £100 for one like this. Have a look around. There are other bowls. Blue is difficult to get hold of, I'll be honest, but they are out there if you have a search. Other colours more plentiful they do exactly the same job next up we've got blanket weed treatments again fancy bottles with pictures of koi on massively elevated prices uh, essentially the majority of these products work by removing the food source for the weed which is nitrate and phosphate there are other alternatives that are a fraction of the price which will do the same job hydrogen peroxide is one one such chemical a litre of hydrogen peroxide in a thousand gallons of pond water will remove blanket weed. The benefits to this are twofold. Firstly, it is a, f a lot, lot cheaper. It's a fraction of the cost of a, of a bespoke bottled treatment. And secondly, the uh, hydrogen peroxide works by uh, re inhibiting the weed's growth and spread. Therefore, it sort of dies in a controlled manner. Whereas a lot of the chemical products out there will absolutely nuke the blanket weed. They'll kill it stone dead. This results in many weeks of blocked filters. The black slime on the sides of the pond which block up your filters again for weeks to come. Um, so rather than a catastrophic wiping out of the weed, hydrogen peroxide is much more gentle and, and kills it in a much more controlled way. Again, very, very difficult to overdose, very, very safe and a fraction of the price. Number four, drum screen cleaners, a relatively new thing. A couple of companies have now got on this bandwagon and are producing a, a little bottle with, with nice pictures on of uh, liquid for cleaning drum screens. So the story is, if you haven't seen my drum video, there's a lot more detail in that though. Do check that out. I will link to it in the description below as well. Screens on drums, as biofilm builds up on the screens because the holes are very, very small, the they can become reduced by the biofilm growth. As such, once a month, once every couple of months, what the circumstances will dictate how often you need to do it. But if you have a drum, you'll need to just clean the screen of biofilm and basically you're just killing off the biofilm. A very mild acid is used. 
and this is now being bottled and sold quite expensive price quite high price for as a product specifically for that you don't need that citric acid um, uh, lemon juice something of that nature in a in a squirty bottle or either brush it on or spray it on leave it five minutes rinse it off done don't waste your money on 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 purpose made screen cleaning products that just contain a mild acid so on to category two uh, and category two is is what i deem products that are false economy so things where we scrimp and save a little bit of money were if we'd spent a little bit more in the long run we would be financially better off and the first one is cheap microscopes a lot of people ask what's the cheapest microscope they can find do these children's microscopes work um, the short answer is spend a bit more money on a proper microscope i always recommend the apex practitioner there's there's other there's others a couple of others as well that are equally as good in the uk 125 130 pound that is the minimum i would recommend it's also the maximum i would recommend you don't need any better than that the reason it's false economy you buy a cheap scope off ebay for 30 quid you only have to miss one parasite once and it has cost you in dead fish way more than if you'd have bought a proper microscope in the first place if you're new to scraping kai it is it can be daunting it is a bit tricky until you get your eye in that will process of learning will be made all the more difficult with a cheap microscope get yourself a decent microscope as i say i recommend the apex practitioner brunel have an equivalent as well don't scrimp on uh, of all the areas you could scrimp and save microscope isn't one next up cheap koi food again the benefits to a good quality koi food are threefold probably you get yourself a cheap koi food the majority of that food ends up as pollutant in your water your filter works harder your fish become weakened by the dodgy water parameters you can in you can weaken them such that a parasite can can get on top you can have parasite outbreaks you can have bacterial infections your general fish health will be weakened by a cheap food because the nutritional value isn't there either so they're not getting all the nutrients they need the minerals etc etc buy yourself a good quality food again i recommend saki hikari uh, it's not cheap if you buy it if you use a cheap food again your fish only need to become ill once through poor water quality or through a uh, weakened immune system or, or just general poor health due to an, in, uh, uh, an inadequate nutrition profile it will soon pay for itself hikari wheat germ is what i feed my fish all year round uh, there's no waste the, the majority the vast majority of the food is assimilated by the koi doesn't end up as pollution in your water your koi are healthy the skin is is bright colors everything is is bang on so yeah number six poor quality food again not an area to scrimp on and it will cost you in the long run number seven box filters black box filters and i'm going to throw pressure filters in there as well great for small fish ponds water features no problem don't believe the manufacturer's figures because when it comes to koi a black box filter and a pressure filter they're not suitable i hear people will share i've had a pressure filter and i've not had problems you're getting away with it you're not your koi are not flourishing you 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 are you may have been lucky avoid them if if you possibly can buy a bespoke koi filter yes they cost a little bit more but again you only have to kill one fish and that that extra expense is being justified lastly in this category i've got water test strips so good for your hot tub not good for koi keeping again false economy yes they're cheaper than a proper dropper test kit such as the colombo which is the one i recommend um api do do a good one nt labs there's others dropper test kit preferable every time over test strips so by strips i mean the ones that you dip in the water you take it out and you read off they're not accurate they're not they're, re they're not reproducible in the results again one bad reading you're going to lose fish it's quickly paid for itself again false economy so avoid if at all possible and i would argue it's always possible get yourself a dropper test kit better off in the long run and and i believe financially you will be better off as well 
Okay, on to category number three. A uh, couple of controversial ones in here. If you don't agree with any of these, do leave a comment below, let me know what you think. I'm always um, keen to hear other people's opinions. First up, I'm going to jump straight in, Claire. Did he just say what I thought he said? 27 years now keeping Kai. I've been aware of people, I've known people throwing clay in their ponds regularly, they swear by it. I have yet to find one person who can prove to me or show me a tangible benefit from adding clay to your koi pond. Manufacturers try to sell clay to you on, there's a couple of different angles they approach. One is minerals, throw some clay in your water, your water will be full of minerals, it'll be just like a Japanese mud pond and we all know how good they are at growing fish. Uh, firstly, yes, Japanese mud ponds are absolutely brilliant at growing fish. Secondly, it isn't because of the minerals in the water. Predominantly, Japanese mud ponds don't have minerals in the water. They're almost entirely void of minerals, in fact, quite the opposite. So, filling your pond with minerals isn't moving it towards a Japanese mud pond at all. In fact, it's doing nothing. Your koi get all the bent, all the minerals they will ever need from their food. There's no need to add minerals to the water. And again, that does emphasize the, the importance of a good quality koi food, as I mentioned earlier. The other approach they take is that it will somehow clean up your water and make your water clearer. Scientifically, there's a tiny bit of truth in this, in that when you throw in clay, as the clay particles fall through the water column, they can uh, almost attach themselves to fine particles that are suspended in your water, drag them down to the bottom. That is, there's some element of science behind that. However, if you've got uh, particles suspended in your water, your filtration's inadequate, or you're not cleaning it enough, or you're not feeding a good quality food, so I would argue, address the source of the fine particles once and for all, rather than throw clay in at quite a big expense, clouds your water up for a period, and it'll, it'll drag the fines down for an hour or two, and then they'll be back. Rather than trying to stick a plaster on it, fix the problem. Um, they will also tell you that it'll improve your koi's colour and skin. The anecdotal evidence to this is that when you drag the fines down, your water becomes clearer. Arguably, you may see your fish better, it, they may appear clearer, brighter, whatever. Again, temporary. It's not a fix. So yeah, I give give them a miss. They are a lot of money, and I they don't bring any positive benefit to you, or your koi, or your pond at all, or your pond system. Next up, koi treats. Uh, a personal bugbear of mine is treats for koi. Your koi, we often try to project human emotion onto our koi, onto our dogs, etc. They don't think like us. They don't get a treat. Somehow you th people think you give them a treat, they're, oh, this is great, a treat, oh, we're all happy now, and they enjoy it, and they don't. If you feed them a good quality koi food, as I mentioned earlier, such as hikari wheat germ, every single time you feed them fish, 10 times a day in summer, they are getting a treat. The only thing specific uh, foods sold as koi treats do is cause a spike in your very small ecosystem which doesn't need a lot to tip it off. They cause a spike in nutrition, pollutants, whatever it may be that your system and your koi have to cope with. Consistency is absolutely vital. Stick to a good quality koi food, however many times a day your fish will eat it, and that is all the treat your koi will ever need. Don't waste your money on things in bags called treats. Next up, preventative treatments. There's no such thing as a preventative treatment. You can't put something in your pond today that will stop a problem coming tomorrow. If it's not there today, you can't kill it now. A preventative treatment does absolutely nothing. All treatments have a lifespan an active period when you put them in, usually hours. You put it in, if there's nothing in there for it to kill, within hours it's spent, you've wasted your money. There's no such thing. You can't kill what's not there. Forget preventative treatments. Filtration, cleaning regularly, good adequate filtration, good quality food, lots of oxygen, they're all the prevention you need. Next up, another one, probably a bit, a bit controversial, UV sterilizers. 
Uh, a sterilizer can cost three times the price of a, um, a clarifier. Are they worth the money? In my opinion, not. I'm not saying for a second that they don't work though. A UV sterilizer, sterilizer versus a clarifier, the sterilizer will kill some bacteria. That's great. And if you've got so much money that you wouldn't miss it, then by all means get one, it won't do any harm. If like me, you need to be more careful with your money, you're not gonna see a lot, a lot if any benefit from a sterilizer. The reason being the bacteria that the sterilizer can kill, that it needs to kill, the bad bacteria, always lives on surfaces it does not ever it's not free swimming it so it therefore it never ever passes through your sterilizer for it to kill it so the benefit is negligible um, as i say no downsides other than cost so if you're happy to throw money away you won't do any harm could you know could see a benefit from it but realistically not the only time they are of a benefit, if you get one that goes in a drum filter, then they'll keep your screen clean, avoiding the need to clean your screen, as I mentioned earlier, because they'll kill the bacteria, stop biofilm growing on your screen. Other than that, as I say, if you're on a budget like me, save your money for something more important. Next up, beneficial bacteria. I saw this 20 years ago when these came along. People were swore by and people were throwing beneficial bacteria in the ponds left, right and centre. In the UK that's largely now died away, but some other countries the use of beneficial bacteria is absolutely rife. People think it will clear up sludge, they think it will do this, they think it will do that. It really won't. The beneficial bacteria that for ponds contains nitrosomonas, nitrobacter bacteria to, to effectively digest ammonia and subsequently nitrite. If you throw that into an established pond where there is no ammonia and nitrate level, then that bacteria will die. You may as well put your money, throw it down the drain. The only time these things are beneficial to a koi keeper is during the startup of a new filter system. And even then, it will speed it up. It will make the process a little bit easier. It will damp out any fluctuations. But ultimately, the, the, every pond system is individual. The types of bacteria and the ratios of bacteria that one pond needs will be different to the next and the next, all different. And so that ratio of bacteria and the types of bacteria in that bottle are probably not what your filter system needs and what nature itself will produce in there if given enough time. So while you're starting up the filter, putting these in will give you a kickstart. Ultimately, nature will replace these bottled bacteria types with the right ones, the optimum ones for your situation. Yes, I do recommend putting them in when you're starting up a filter. Beyond that, no benefit whatsoever. People will argue also coming out of spring, but again, for the same reasons, it's, it's bacteria, but it's not the right bacteria. Build up your feed gradually in spring. Keep on top of every, all your filter maintenance, all your husbandry. Build up your feed gradually, the right food, good quality food and the, the, the colonies of bacteria will re-emerge uh, re from the winter if you like. The right, the strong, the right bacteria. It's much better if you can do that. Lastly for this category I've got medicated food. A lot of, a lot of food companies claim they put in the some claim um, antibiotics. We all know that antibiotics uh, if used long term will be rendered useless because it, everything will build up an immunity to it. I don't believe it's even in there. If it is, then I would rather not feed it to my fish than feed it to them. But most foods that claim to be medicated are not, with the exception of pre and probiotics, which are in all good quality koi foods. The thing that really winds me up is companies that use the letters M-E-D-I in the product or in the name, the brand, that while they never actually claim that there's medical or medicated, that is the implication. And so many people believe that medi mm -mm, food is medicated, it's somehow going to fix their fish and make up for poor filtration or poor whatever it may be, it is not. Never ever rely on what claims to be medicated food if you have an issue with a fish. Test your water parameters properly using a dropper test kit diagnose exactly the issue if it's not the water quality parameters microscope scrape some fish find the parasite find the problem when you find the problem 
find the best treatment single treatment for that that particular ailment treat the fish job done give the medicated food a miss if you're feeding it all year round as i say if it does have antibiotics in there then you're doing your koi more harm than good because they're building up immunity parasites everything that's the building up an immunity to antibiotics if it's not there then you're wasting your time and money anyway so yeah please do avoid medicated food or at the very least don't believe it will treat ailments because it won't and as promised a 15th i believe item which could literally fall into every single one of those categories and that item is all in one treatments so some companies will sell a bottle of something that claims to treat all koi ailments or par all parasites whatever it may be this is nonsense it does not work these these treatments have generic active ingredients in them the chances of that actually working on the condition you have are so slim and by the time you've wasted money on that you've put it in you've waited a week you've put it in again you've waited another week you've realized that it's actually not working we're two weeks down the line we're money down the drain you could now lose fish you could have already lost fish and you're no further on than you were two weeks earlier so as i said earlier firstly forget all in one treatments diagnose the problem water parameters first if they're all perfect scrape for parasites if you find a parasite do some research quickly find out what is the best treatment single treatment specifically for that parasite and treat with it according to the manufacturer's instructions do not be fooled or buy, don't buy into this thing all in one treatments they don't work hope that was useful please do check out my other videos do check out the website uh, it's starting to get populated now i've got articles on the courses coming soon shop coming soon exciting uh, news to bring you about the things i'm going to be selling in the shop so going to be some filtration and some other options in there check it out thank you for watching take care of yourself and i'll see you in the next one